Howdy. I'm wondering if you can help me. I need some information. Howdy. Today's green sheet is no day at the beach. Why not roadblock or, or slipstream or, or me? Well, you know what they say. Rangers lead the way. Why not this sweetheart? Don't you call me sweetheart. Putting the night spotter's scope on the 1986 G.I. Joe Ranger, codename Beachhead. The question is why? Because he's one of my favorites, that's why. Now do it! Yes, sir! And don't call me sir! This is my original Beachhead from 1986, one of my all-time favorite childhood G.I. Joe figures. I never got the chance to own Stalker back then, but when Hasbro decided to issue another Ranger in 86, there was no way I was passing on him. 86 was back when figures didn't include a whole lot of accessories, but the ones that were included were very memorable. Beachhead included a 9mm XF7 submachine gun with stock, reminiscent of the weapon of the other Joe Ranger, Stalker's M32 submachine gun. This particular one isn't the original, which is a lighter shade of grey. This one's from one of the Battle Gear Extra Packs, but I've always preferred how the darker gun looked with the figure. That was Beachhead's only accessory weapon, but he had a few weapons sculpted on for close encounters. A holster and pistol on his leg. A... Uh, thing? Is that a bomb? And this is one Joe with no aversion to knives. Two of them on his right leg. Wonder what you need two knives for? Nothing good. I'll bet. And two more weapons. His bare hands. And you know where they went. Put down your throat, maggot! Yo, Joe! Beachhead also included an ammo bag that was a huge improvement over the one that was included with Snake Eyes in 82. In addition to being just plain bigger, it had a much more bendy strap to it than the rigid Snake Eyes one. And finally, the backpack. One of the best of any Joe in my opinion. Instead of just a pack with pockets, this one had a lot going on. See that? Yeah, but I couldn't make it out. It was just a glowing thing. That glow would be coming off the flashlight. There's also a mini crossbow. And the weird thing on the side and on the bottom, it's actually a collapsed hook with the rope for it looping around the bottom. Clips for his gun across his chest and a splash of color on his shoulder, a red beret folded up. Let's take a look at the card art by the one and only Hector Garrido. Even though he was called a ranger, he always gave off more of a Snake Eyes Commando vibe, thanks to being one of the few masked Joes, as well as the ammo pouch. Okay, let's get into the history of Beachhead with his file card. Well, I don't give a rat's whisker about history! Alright, you can just wait over there for a second. Codename, Beachhead. Ranger. File name, Sneeden, Wayne R. Primary military specialty, infantry. Secondary military specialty, small arms armorer. Birthplace, Auburn, Alabama. Grade is E6, and since Beachhead comes from the Army, that makes him a staff sergeant. And the bio reads, Beachhead was a lane instructor at the Ranger School in Fort Benning and an observer slash advisor at the Covert Ops School in Central America. He's meticulous, patient, wait a minute, patient? This doesn't make sense. And strong-willed. He likes getting up at 0500 hours to take a 10 mile run and PT session before breakfast. He enjoys squatting motionless beside a jungle trail for three days straight, waiting to ambush bad guys that might never show up. What he hates is people who aren't interested in doing their best. Qualified expert, all NATO and Warsaw packed small arms. And the quote reads, Most folks will get mad on occasion or at least get irritable. Not Beachhead. He thinks anger is a waste of time and energy. Rage clouds the vision and pollutes logic. Fury impairs judgment and makes you careless. The results of anger are totally unacceptable to Beachhead. He doesn't get angry, he gets even. Uh, excuse me? Hmm, another personality trait that didn't make it into the show. Okay, that tears it. What are you doing? The crowd ain't the only thing that's gone bananas. Beachhead didn't show up on the Sunbow series until the final season in 86, but he had two major roles on the show. One of the first things we're informed of in the season premiere of the 86 season, Arise Serpentor Arise Part 1, is that this new masked man, much like Hawk, has hotshotted his way up the chain of command. First comes Hawk, then Duke, then me, and finally you. Yeah, well maybe that'll change someday. He spends most of his time in the final season either as an instructor or trainer, keeping the Joes sharp. Hot, hot. 
You wow. call this military discipline? Cross country's putting a tape deck in his havoc. What the heck you guys think you're doing? You're supposed to be monitoring the base perimeter. Your chin is down. Your chest out. Your gut in. Your face mean. Or being Hawk's right hand man, carrying out special missions. Beachhead, get those volunteers who'd like to take a crack at the Terror Drome on Cobra Island. Yes, sir. I want you to repel four men down the back of the building and steal a stun. It was a cool combination. The soft-spoken, grandfatherly hawk delegating to the loud, intense staff sergeant. Beachhead, you and Lady Jade take a recon team to where the object went down. Yes, sir. And speaking of sergeants, Beachhead's role as a trainer unfortunately got pushed to the side fairly quick. In the same episode he debuted in, actually. Thanks to Sergeant Slaughter being a bit bigger and talking a little louder than Sergeant Sneeden. Give your hearts to America, Joes, cause your butts belong to me! I always imagined Beachhead eventually becoming a general and leading the entire Joe team. He certainly had the desire. Now if I was in charge, but you aren't Beachhead. As well as the ability. Find it and dispose of it. While he never got his own featured episode, the ones he does appear in, he pretty much steals the show by being so bombastic. One of his best, though, apart from training the rawhides in the movie, now, I'm gonna see what you rawhides are really made of. is in the episode The Most Dangerous Thing in the World, written by Buzz Dixon, where he tries to keep the Joe team from falling apart after Cobra hacks the Joe computer to promote shipwreck, dial tone, and lifeline to colonels. That's why I was sending this urgent message to General Hawk in Europe. We need him back here pronto to restore order. There were a number of different modern 4-inch G.I. Joe releases based on the original 86 design, and he just recently received his first 6-inch version in the G.I. Joe Classified line. A bit of a redesign, but inspired enough by the original design that most fans would say, yeah, that's Beachhead alright. How's that for starters? Some of the highlights include being able to remove the crossbow off the backpack and use it as an actual weapon, as well as previously sculpted on weapons on the legs, like his pistol and knife. And instead of having a sculpted on red beret, a full wearable beret was included. Hold it! What? This is the worst disaster G.I. Joe has ever faced! Hmm. I think he kind of pulls it off, actually. <laughs> Pathetic. Never mind. Oh, I guess I should mention this too, since it gets brought up often. His hygiene. Namely, his favorite brand of deodorant. What do you mean? I don't use deodorant. <laughs> Enough said. Whew. We gotta get out of here! Hope you enjoyed the spotlight on the rambunctious ranger. Feel free to share your own memories of number four on the totem pole. <laughs> Very funny. And thank you to the Patreon tribe members as well as the channel members for supporting the channel. All right, Addies! Yo, Joe!